Yes, coming to you live from my apartment. It's Rob has a podcast. And now here's a guy who just watched 11 minutes of Emmett and Jillian kissing on YouTube. Rob <laughs> Sesternino. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Big Brother podcast. Uh, heading into what week seven, week eight of who even knows already, already. with with Big Brother Canada. I am Rob Sesternino, and we have a very special guest with us here tonight. If you know him from Big Brother Canada. Here is Anil. Anil, how are you? Good. How are you, Rob? Anil, thank you very much for joining us. We have a lot of shifts and twists to talk about with you, and we want to hear what your take is, and of course, get your endorsement for who is going to come back into the Big Brother house this Thursday. And we are also joined here by the man who is watching it all, does not miss a thing ever in the Big Brother Canada house. Here is the one and only Brian Lynch. Hey, hey, hey. Sometimes I do miss a thing or two. Yes. All right, good. Well, hopefully not too, not too much this week because we have a lot, a lot to get to. But let's not, let's not bury the lead. It's power shift time in the Big Brother house. Uh, somebody is coming back into the Big Brother house after we get down to the final four. I, I mean, what what is this? Uh, Redemption Island? Why is somebody coming back to the house this late in the game? And Neil, have you ever heard of anything like this? Um, no, but once again, I think Big Brother Canada is doing a completely original uh, twist to Big Brother Canada with the power shift. So they're spicing things up. I, Anil, you sound like you're in favor of such a radical twist to the game at this point. Um, uh, you know, I wish that the power shifted was something like this that happened to me. I actually got the other way around where I was ousted by a power shift, but I am actually excited for, uh, you know, somebody to come back in and get a shot again, possibly. Okay. So now you are very pro, you seem pro the power shift. Is this because, are you politicking to get on Big Brother Canada All-Stars that you love all the <laughs> twists now? Uh, well, usually if you're voted out pre-jury, you don't have a, a good chance at All-Stars, but I'll do what I have to do, right? <laughs> All right. Hey, look, Mike Boogie, uh, what was he, the third or fourth person out on Big, on Big Brother 2, and then That's he comes back true. and wins Big Brother All-Stars? So you don't know. You, you don't never know. know. Uh, so uh, we'll see. Yeah, so the Big Brother, we had a double eviction the other night, and then at the end of the episode on Thursday, we got a an announcement that the Big Brother power shift was going to bring back one of the four jury members back into the house. Now, what's the point of doing double evictions when we're just bringing people back into the house? I think it's to keep the house guests on their toes. We never, especially I think after my first twist, the theories of what twists are going to happen have been like nonstop in the house. So I think it's just to keep the house guests on their toes. But I'm actually excited to see that you know, the house is excited to get rid of Alec and Topaz in one double eviction, Liza and Tom in one double eviction, but somebody might be coming back to haunt them. Yeah. We'll see. How many twists now is this for Big Brother Canada? I, I mean, I guess we're not counting the phone, right? That, that was fine. No, I think the, this is the third power shift. Oh, no. There was the power shift instant eviction, the Canada's veto, um, bringing somebody back. Yeah. I think this is three, three big, three. three big twists in the game. You know, we didn't get to talk to you. We know how you felt about the first power shift. Uh, we didn't get to talk to you about the instant eviction. What was your take on that? Did you think that was fair? Um, that that was that was intense. Um, but it was basically the same thing that um, happened to me because AJ was a backdoor. He didn't fight for veto, and I didn't have a chance to fight for. Veto. So essentially, nobody got a chance to fight for veto. Both power shifts. So it's kind of just like, boom! You just have to fight for your life in that two-minute campaign speech. What about the part about Topaz's conversation being seen by the whole house? I had a big um, problem with that. I didn't think that was fair. That was that was crazy. I I wonder though if she um, was talking out loud on purpose or if she thought it was a die room situation where she had to talk out loud um, but that was crazy that she outed her whole game and I felt like that sucked to be her yeah didn't, didn't think that was very fair but let's not go back too far into this so we have a new power shift somebody is coming back there are four people that could potentially come back it's between Gary Alec Topaz and AJ Anil who is coming back into the house 
Um, you know, surprisingly, it's usually the person that was most recently voted out because they had the most airtime. But I think it's going to come down between AJ and Gary for the simple fact that they're really funny. AJ didn't get a chance to fight for Vito. People thought he left way too soon. And Gary just has a huge fan base. Yeah, I think so too. I know. I went to the Big Brother Canada website the other day. I thought this was very telling that they had, who do you want to come back into the house? And the order they had them listed was Gary, Alec, Topaz, AJ, which is not the order that they were voted out. It's not alphabetical order. That's weird. It seems to me that's the order that the producers would want these people to return <laughs> to the house, if anything. Uh, do you think, is are the producers hoping for Gary to come back? Um, I think that, you know, Gary would definitely spike the spice things up i'm surprised they would if they would want anyone it to be alec because alec just gave up really he showed no sign of fighting so i would say for entertainment purposes they would want either aj or gary back for sure you seem like you're a big aj fan Anil. it was i i feel like aj definitely there was some entertainment value was he that entertaining aj um you know i'm not an aj fan in the sense of the game i think that he's not really going to do anything and I'm silently rooting for Andrew. So I think it's going to hurt Andrew's game if AJ comes back. But I can totally see like the fans of Canada voting him back. Now, why do you think AJ is going to come back into the house? I mean, as Seacoast Patriot writes in the chat room, remember Canada voted for Suzette, of all people, over AJ to get the veto and save him. Was Are you saying that Canada just didn't get a chance to know AJ at that point? Yeah, I think that AJ had no airtime at that point. Suzette had the whole week that she was HOH. And people voted Suzette back to piss Tom off and because they liked Suzette. So she kind of had two fan bases voting for her, if that makes sense. Okay, well, we are live here with Anil on a Big Brother Canada podcast Tuesday night here. And we have the chat room going on com, as well as we are taking your tweets if you uh, send them in with hashtag R-H-A-P. We'll ask Anil your questions and talk with Brian Lynch about everything that's been going on on the live feed. So I feel like after you got out of the house, even though you targeted Gary a bit while you were in the house, I feel like you've become a, a, a Gary supporter as well. Is that fair? Yes. I think that um, removing myself from the house, because the biggest thing I had with Gary was living with him. He was a very hard person to live with. So I kind of personally wanted him out, but watching him He's a complete underdog. He was a target from week one. So as a Big Brother fan, I always naturally cheer for the underdog. So I was complete Team Gary once I got out. So what I'd like to do potentially is go through the scenarios of what could happen if each person comes to the house. But to do this, I think we're going to have to get into a little bit of spoiler territory. So um, what I'm going to say is, spoiler people, I'm going to have to check out a little bit early. If you don't want to know what ha what is going to happen as far as what is going to unfold on Wednesday night's show, you're going to have to check out and come back after Wednesday night's shows to hear the rest of this conversation. So real quick, Brian Lynch, let us know uh, with with where do things stand on the block right now and what is the most likely eviction scenario? Well, um, Andrew won the power of veto and removed himself, and now Tala is up against Peter. Okay, so Tala is up against Peter, and we're all assuming Peter is going to be the one going home, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's look at this from the perspective of Final Four, Jillian, Emmett, Tala, and Andrew. Now let's see what happens when we put any of these four players back into the mix here. So Jillian and Emmett, Andrew, Tala, and Gary. What happens there, Anil? Well, I think that all four of them are going to team together with Andrew and Tala to get Jillian and Emmett out because they're going to see how much Jillian has won. They're going to see that they're the only showmans um, that got him out. And I feel like Jillian and Emmett are going to be in the most trouble. I think that Gary's going to work with Tala and Andrew for sure. Because aren't Jillian and Emmett, isn't that who or... See, with, uh, with Gary coming back, is he going to go after Andrew because Andrew was the HOH that put him out, or will he go after Emmett and Jillian because that's the best chance to win the game? Um, I think that he would go, he would work with Andrew because Emmett and Jillian were the ones that told him that to they were going to vote Topaz out. So I feel like he might be more bitter towards them. 
Brian, do you have any insight on this as to what you think Gary might do if he comes back? Um, not really, other than he doesn't really like Jillian. He may have some kind of issue with her yeah. and might go after her. Um, other than that, I really think that, he, you know, Andrew did put him on the block, but everybody lied to him. I guess it kind of comes down to how he perceives um, the, total, the total blind side part yeah. of it. Anil, do you think that the jury members are all being sequestered separately, or do you think they're all together in one place? Um, based on Twitter uh, photo updates, they've been together in one place. They have a group photo and stuff like that. So how much do we think now if all four of these jury members are all hanging out together and talking about everything that went on in the house, you know, this wedding alliance uh, is, is back together. You also have Alec in the mix. Uh, AJ ta talking about everything that was going on while he was in the house. Do you think that any of these people that come back will be, you know, opinionated in a different way with having all the information and secrets spilled from these jury members that are all together? Yeah, I think that whoever comes back in is going to have a lot of ammunition um, towards the people still in the house because once you're voted out, you kind of let go of your secrets, you kind of tell conversations that happened. So they're going to have a really cool insight and a good pulse on what's going on once they return. It seems like a huge advantage. Like if Gary comes back and then he's armed with Alec telling him all week, okay, for me and Peter were working together the whole time and we had yeah. this going on and we had, and then uh, Tala, we thought she was with you guys and she was really with us. So I feel like they're going to have all of the information. Yeah, they're going to have a huge, huge benefit because the hardest part about the game is not knowing where everyone stands and they're going to walk in knowing exactly where everyone stands. Yeah. Now, do you think that whoever comes back into the house on Thursday, do you think that they will have any sort of advantage uh, which could be as far as getting a, um, they, like they can't be put up on the block as soon as they come back into the game or any sort of, you know, I feel I'm not sure if if this is ever accurate. I feel like when uh, back in you know earlier Big Brothers, I feel like um, Big Brother Three when Amy came back to the house, I feel like there was and again this could have been changed in my mind, but I feel like that there was some sort of talk like she they she had some sort of practice with what the HOH competition was going to be, so they knew that the rest of the house was going to immediately evict her. Do you think that there will be any advantage in the uh, game for the whoever comes back as far as competitions go? No, I think the advantage that they're going to get is the knowledge, and what's great about coming back in Final Five is you win HOH, and then you're automatically in the Final Four. When you're in the final four, all you have to do is win veto, and then you control the vote, and you're safe. So they only really have to win two competitions to make it to the final three. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they don't have to really... If this person comes back, they don't necessarily have to talk game to anyone. They just need to win HOH this week, veto next week, and they're in the final three. Yeah. So do you think that what will happen is on Thursday night, we'll have the eviction... Then they'll and then they'll bring somebody back into the house and then they'll play HOH with the new person in the mix. Um, yeah, I think the new person in the mix will be have a chance to win HOH, but I it depends if they reveal the person coming back before or after they vote to evict because I feel like that could hurt Peter because if they say one of the jury members are coming back, the, everyone's going to be like, oh, it might be Alec for sure. Vote Peter out if that makes sense. Do you think that they could potentially bring the person back into the house before the vote? For instance, if oh. uh, production wanted to save Peter over Tala, do you? Th I mean, and I would think that production would want to save Peter over Tala. Could they potentially bring back the power shift person before the vote? That would be crazy. It doesn't really say when they're coming back, um, so that would be interesting if they have to come back in and then vote right away for eviction. Brian, what do we think the vote's going to be on Thursday? Um, I'm assuming it's going to be unanimous to get rid of Peter. Okay, yeah. so that doesn't help him. So it's no. two, only two people are voting, right? And then even if it was 1-1, one, one, then Jillian is going to break the tie. Yeah. So it'll be Emmett and Andrew voting. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, we'll get into uh, all of the scenarios with the eviction and whether that's the right decision to evict Peter in, in just a bit. So what happens if Alec comes back into the house? Now, we'll assume Peter is gone. Here comes Alec. Is Alec also going to work with Andrew and Tala to get out Jillian and Emmett? 
Yeah, I think so as well. And then it depends. Alex is in a really cool situation where he can go to all four of them and say, hey, I got a chance to come back in the game. The jury is going to vote you over me because you actually played longer. I already had $10,000, so just take me to the final two. Give me second place, and you're going to win for sure. So he has that leverage. See, I was a big Alec fan. I liked Peter and Alec uh, all along in the game. And, uh, you know, I was a fan of Alec, and I liked how he talked about Dr. Will. But I have to say I was a bit turned off uh, his last week or so in the house. I did not understand why he would, one, throw the veto competition last week, and then he threw the veto competition again this week for no, re no strategic reason. He seemed uh, pr just pretty lackadaisical about the whole thing, and just really I felt like he went out without a fight. I think that he, um, in his head, his ego is a lot bigger, and he thought, you know, um, if I do big, bold things, it'll make me go down as like a big brother great. You know, Dr. Will and Dan through competitions, I'm just like them. Um, so I think that he kind of got inside of his own head and was his worst enemy because he never should have threw that HOH that Jillian won. He never should have thrown that veto. He could have he could have been sitting pretty in the final three easy had he not thrown those competitions. Yeah, I never understood why he threw the HOH. And plus, you know, if you want to be like Dr. Will or be like Dan, neither of those guys ever came out and said, uh, you know, Dan wasn't never said to the rest of the house like, uh, I mean, or, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to fact check me and correct me on this, but Dan never stood up in front of the whole house and said, hey, guys, just so you know, I threw that competition. I wasn't trying to win it. I mean, Dan would always say, oh, man, I was trying yeah, to win exactly. it. You guys are just better than I am. And you appear weak. You don't say, hey, I'm strong. I'm just throwing competitions. Exactly. I mean, that doesn't do anything. Um, so I was a little turned off by Alec, and I feel like he lost a lot of mojo uh, with me. Yeah, me too. And I think that's what um, that's what's going to hurt him in this vote, I think. I think that the audience is very off. Um, put by Alex's behavior his last week in the house, so he's not going to get as many votes as he would have three weeks ago. Yeah. All right, so Topaz, are we going to uh, write her off, or does Topaz have a chance to come back? You never know. Honestly, I, I haven't Holy really... Um, she um She really, I think, won over a lot of viewers, too, for the fact that she was second in that HOH competition next to Jillian, uh, nobody really thought Topaz had that in her. So I think that people were respecting her more as a game player. I feel like Topaz seemed like she was happy to be out of the house on Thursday night. Yeah, I think that she was happy just because Alec was gone. She knew she had no chance. I think that she mentally had checked out. So she was like, perfect, I get to go right after Alec, and I don't have to suffer another week. Yeah, maybe if Topaz has some guy fans out there that could be wanting to get Topaz back in the house, uh, yeah. I guess we could see it, but I would think it's very unlikely to see Topaz come back. Yeah, I think that she would be on the bottom half of the floor. And I feel like that would be kind of like the worst case scenario as far as drama goes because I feel like um, Jillian and Emmett already got her out of the house. I feel like the threesome of Topaz, Tala, and Andrew, I feel like is really lacking some organization. Yeah, for sure. But I think Topaz is just waiting to go off on Jillian and Emmett. So we, no, we might get a, we might get a nice screaming match. Okay, and then finally, if AJ comes back to the house, Anil's pick to come back um, <laughs> could uh, that I feel like would be the biggest uh, power shift I think in the game because you have that that showmance reunited between AJ and Andrew. Yeah, I think that um, like I said, I'm a huge Andrew fan, so it would hurt Andrew because I think people would put up AJ and Andrew, and Andrew would go home. But if AJ came back into the game, I think that he would skate beautifully to the final three. And then, he, who knows, he might pick out a win and be in the final two. So I think it would just be interesting, comical. Um, it would just be cool to watch if he came back in. It would be crazy if AJ came back into the house because then the whole game shifts into the battle for Tala here at final five exactly. between Jillian and Emmett and Andrew and AJ. Do Andrew and AJ have a uh, showman's nickname? No, not that I... Oh, we, in the house, we used to call them, like, chocolate milk and white milk. That's a, that's not a catchy nickname at all. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really... <laughs> we couldn't think of anything clever. Yeah. Um, 
I have to say, I was not an Andrew fan for most of the season. But without AJ, I feel like Andrew has really gotten to showcase his personality a bit. And I have to say, I've become a bit of an Andrew fan. Yeah, Andrew is hands down the funniest person in the house. It doesn't come across that way, but he would make us laugh like nonstop. So I think that now that um, AJ's gone, he really was just himself more because people just viewed him as Andrew and AJ. Um, and he's a beast in competitions. He's won three. He's won the most so far while well, tied with Jillian. Yeah. Although one of them, to be on a technicality, we have to say that Alec gave him one of gave them. Gave it to him. Very true. He did give him one of them. Okay, so we'll see how what exactly is going to happen. Do you think that there's a chance that somebody who got kicked out can actually win the game? Um, it's difficult. I think it comes down to if the jury is going to be voting based on the game or if they're going to be voting based on personal experiences. I think that um, Jill, if Jillian and let's say Gary or Jillian and Alec are in the final two, a lot of people might vote for Gary or Alec for the simple fact that Jillian's nominated everyone that's in the jury except for AJ. Yeah. It, again, it's like that Survivor Redemption Island thing where it's like, hey, don't blame me. I didn't kick you out of the house. I didn't lie to you. I was over. I was in the jury house for the last three weeks. So vote exactly. for me. So we'll exactly. see. We'll see. Maybe. Uh, who knows? I mean, and Gary, if we, he's got some friends on the jury. I mean, he, if he's got Topaz on the jury, um, you know, if you've got like Alec and Peter are sort of annoyed with a Jillian and Emmett, they could vote for Gary and to win in the end. So who knows, Gary could come back and win the whole game and after being kicked out, and that would be perfect for this season of Big Brother Canada with all these twists. I think that, um, I think that if any returning player could come back and win, it would be Gary. It would be, it would be Gary. So let's, let's see. So let's go back to this past week where we had uh, Peter had a chance at the double eviction. He wins the veto here, and with Topaz and... Tala up on the block, correct? Uh, yes. He he wins the veto and decides not to save Topaz. Did you think this was a good decision or one that was a bad one and potentially one that cost him the game? Um, I think that it was um it was a good decision in the sense that had he left Topaz in the game, the house would have viewed him and Topaz as a duo. Um, so it would, cause him, Alec and Topaz were in alliance the whole game. So I think that he was, he was prepared to play the game by himself. He figured that he could skate by if Andrew and Tyler are a duo and Julian and Emmett are a duo. He could pit them against each other. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people killing Peter about this decision. Even Jorge Alvarado in the chat room said Peter's biggest mistake. But I have to say as a first guest, I didn't think it was a bad move because I thought he needed to gain the trust of Jillian and Emmett and show that he could be a final three person with them. Exactly. And I think Peter's biggest mistake um, this week strategically was that he tells Emmett, you know, um, if Andrew wins veto and he takes Tala off the block, then Emmett, you're the only replacement. You go up. Um, he should have pulled Andrew and Tala, and the three of them should have gotten together b before the veto and said, let's throw the veto to Tala, because then Tala can remove one of us, and then, therefore, by default, Emmett has to go on the block, and then they vote Emmett out, and then Jillian can't play HOH next week, so then they just put Jillian up. They could have gotten them both out back to back. Hold on, hold Jillian. on. Let me let me get my pencil out here. So, <laughs> so you're saying uh, it's it's and it sounds good. Let me just let me just uh, have you worked out the math on this? Yeah. So uh, Emmett, um, Andrew, and Peter are on the block, right? Okay. A and P on the block. And then Tal is not on the block. Okay. All right. five of them compete in the veto. Okay. Tal wins the veto. They throw the veto to Tala. They all work together to make sure Tala wins the veto. Tala takes Andrew off. By default, the only replacement nominee is Emmett, but Tala and Andrew control the votes, so they vote Emmett out on Jillian's HOH. That would work. That would work. This is why Canada screwed us here. <laughs> this guy could have been in the house. He could have been. This is his hundred thousand dollars. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, Canada. <laughs> but it's it was it was pure strategic genius um if peter had done that he knew that emmett by default was going to be the replacement but he told it to jillian and emmett when he should have told it to andrew and tala 
because you basically say, hey, one of us are going home by default this week, but we can swing it and get ML. Yeah. Uh, Brian, did you see it the same way that this was a good decision for Peter, or do you think it was a bad move uh, to not save um, Topaz on Thursday night? Well, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, um, so it, it looks like Peter's going home, so it doesn't really look like a good uh, a good decision. But with uh, the the original nomination was going to be Peter and Tala, so if Peter hadn't said anything, he wouldn't have had to go into anybody until after nominations. And uh, when Andrew won veto, then maybe he would have just taken Tala off the block exactly. on his own. And then Peter would have to have done nothing. So, yeah, that was a big mistake telling Emmett that he was in danger for sure. Yeah, I thought it was a shrewd move by Jillian to, even though it seemed like on the TV show that Emmett wanted to keep Peter off the block, I thought it was a shrewd move by Jillian to uh, make Tala be the one who uh, could have won the veto because Tala seems the most incapable of winning anything in the house. So I thought that was a good job by Jillian to put the two guys up on the block. Yeah. If they win the veto, you have Tala to put up there and you don't have to worry about Tala winning the veto. Yeah, I think that that was the reasoning of it. And I think that they were toying with the possibility of even getting Andrew out, um, just using this week to vote Andrew out and get rid of him. So. Yeah. All right, let's take some questions from people. This is from Adrian12991. He says, or she says, uh, um, no one's voting for AJ. It's between Alec and Gary. Not that we really have a say in who's coming back anyways. You know, I have to say, I saw, they have these hashtags, right? It's like hashtag um, BB bring back. Brian, what are, what are the hashtags? Uh, I think it's BB can bring back and then the exactly. name. And then the name. But I've seen everybody's name, so everybody has a a lot of fans out there. I saw the over the weekend. Somebody had like they were charting the number of ha times that all the hashtags were used, and they said it, it, in the chart it, it was AJ was the one that had the highest amount of retweets. Maybe does AJ have some social media support? Yeah. Well, I don't know if he's. I mean, yeah. If it, when you think about well, things getting retweeted, but I don't know how they're calculating the votes. You know, it could just be one tweet, one vote. But there's also an online voting part. Mm -hmm. From my understanding, it was you can get up to two votes, but I don't know for sure, so don't. Brian, who, who have you thrown your support behind? I don't throw my support behind anybody because You're I try neutral. to remain objective. Impartial. Yeah, I try to be a neutral and impartial <laughs> observer on all this. But I would think that Gary would be the one coming back into the house. Okay. Ricky Ritancho says, Rob, please throw your support for Gary to come back to the house. I don't think Gary needs my support to come back to the house. So we'll, we'll see. I will still reluctantly put my support behind Alec, but I do it with the understanding that I think Gary is coming back into the house, and that will probably be the best. Maybe Alec uh, will use this time to get his head out of his butt uh, for these last couple of weeks that he was in the house, but yeah. we'll see. I, don't, I think it's a little late in the game. So uh, l let's see. So... All right, so let's talk a little bit about what's been going on on the live feeds over the course of this week. And so, um, what now, Brian, you were telling me that we had a visitor to the house this week? Yes, we did. Um, and not only just for Andrew's sake, but let's just start with that. They were playing a game of freeze. Big Brother would tell the house guests to freeze, and no matter where they were, they would just have to freeze. And so they told them to freeze and on the feeds you can just see it goes goes on for about a minute or two and then you can hear somebody come into the house and you can hear a voice that count, sounds kind of similar to Andrew's and then um, you hear him say you know y'all can't move remain frozen and then the guy comes down the stairs and it's Andrew's twin brother Pete who puts a phone up in his face and shows him a video of his nieces, I believe, maybe a niece and nephew, but nieces, learning how to say the word turtle. And it was really it was really an emotional moment getting to see Andrew react to all of this um, and not being able to move around or anything. Uh, Pete did eventually make his way through the entire house and say his goodbyes and tell him he loved him, that kind of thing. Well, why did they do this? Um, they didn't do it just for Andrew. Um, I think other people got video messages from their family. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Was anybody suspicious of a Project DNA scenario with Andrew's brother in the house? We, 
We Go joked ahead, about Neil. it. We joked about it. We said, um, because Andrew would be super fun sometimes and then get super annoyed with everyone. So we were like, maybe it's twins back in the house. Yeah. And it's his twin brother, Andrew? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Uh, let's talk about another one of the house guests for this week. This is from Tahoe in the house. Uh, he has a question for Anil, who says, Anil, how the heck did you deal with Tala? She makes the feeds not watchable 98% of the time. That's a lot of time. Uh, Tala had the big breakdown on the show this week as far as being a have-not. She did not want to wake up early and do stuff for people. Um, how did you deal with Tala in the house? I think that it was different for us because we have no TV, no phones, no source of entertainment. So Tala was our entertainment. So we actually, I personally enjoyed it. I, whenever I got bored, I would have her tell me a story or have her cook for me or she was like this little entertainment box for us. Mm -hmm. um, here's a question from, uh, this would be from Jorge Alvarado in the chat room. It says, it would be foolish for Tala and Andrew to not go after Jillian and Emmett at, at this point. Uh, Tala seems ready to throw Emmett under the butts as soon as he gets the chance. Has there been any talk, Brian, between uh, Tala and Andrew about going at, teaming up and going after uh, Jillian and Emmett? Well, Andrew has uh, made a final two deal with Jillian. Um, Jillian kind of has a final two deal with everybody. She may even have one with Peter. She promised him 150,000% that he was safe, and they shook on it. But Wow. So, J Jillian is, uh, is pretty cold-blooded. Yeah, someone joked about it and said, you know, if she says 100%, you might be okay, but if she says anything over 100%, you're screwed. That's totally true, and, and not just with Jillian, but in general. But, Anil, <laughs> Jillian always keeps her promises, though, right? Oh, yeah, I know firsthand she is very honest and loyal with her deals that she makes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very much. Now, did Jillian say this week, Brian, that her biggest regret in the house was that she uh, lied to Anil? Was that, is that accurate? I think what she said, Emmett asked her if there was one big regret, what would it be? And she did say uh, putting a nil on the block week two, was it? Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, week two, I was up on the block. Anil, do you forgive Jillian for putting you on the block now? Yeah, and it's, um, I think that she's definitely feeling it now because that week three when Tom is HOH, um, me and Jillian, you know, we're working together to get lies on board um you know tell on board to really flip the house like on the guys so i think that she just missed ha having like moral support because the only person she has is emmett yeah now are jillian and emmett making the right decision to get peter out of the house this week would they be better off keeping peter and then using him to go after andrew and tala um no because i think that once if they make the final three jillian um emmett and Peter, Peter has a good chance of winning and then going to the final two. And then if he's in the final two, he has Alex's vote. He has Topaz's vote. And then all the people are probably going to be bitter against Jillian and Emmett. So he would win very easily. I feel like Big Brother is a game that favors the underdog. If you get to the final two and you're the underdog, I feel like you have the great shot to win. Exactly, yes. If you were the one everybody was trying to get out and somehow you made it to the end, uh, a la uh, a Will Kirby, a la a Dan Geesling, even an Ian Terry uh, last season. I feel like you have a, the jury loves that, that you were the last one standing and everybody was trying to get you out and they couldn't. Exactly. Um, it should be interesting because I can kind of see everyone left in the house in a final two situation. Yeah, I think so. So, Brian, we had uh, earlier in this season, we had Flashgate with Alec. Now, this week we had a, another Flashgate incident? Yeah, but this one was intentional. An um, intentional Emmett, Flashgate. Yeah, Emmett and Jillian were taking a shower together, and Emmett just kind of opened up the door and flashed his junk. I think Jillian at first was kind of upset that she might have been shown, but she wasn't, and I think she kind of understood that. The angle wasn't right, but Emmett's junk's out there. Okay, so... <laughs> So, so let me just get this straight. So they're in the sh they're in the shower together, and then uh, doing uh, God knows what. And then uh, Emmett is like, "Oh man, this will be hilarious. Let me just uh, flash the camera." I guess that's what he was doing. It, it was it was kind of 
Later on that night, they had this big marathon makeout session, and it looked like something else, but it wasn't. But the okay. next day or morning is when all the makeout session stuff started being shown to uh, to uh, Andrew and Tala, and <laughs> <laughs> and Julian is kind of upset. She's, you know, yeah. Julian, Julian was upset that Emmett did this. No, Julian's upset that things are out there that they were making out and I think we talked about this at the beginning of the season how we didn't I didn't think that Emmett and Julian were going to start making out because Julian was always talking about what her family would think about it she's yeah. shifted back into that mode now okay. she's shifted back there she wants to stay true her to, to her alliance now it's she's kind of trying to wrap up everything <laughs> fair, fair enough uh, so uh, and uh uh, actually, let me uh, <laughs> try, let me try to keep this family friendly. I won't. Uh, no further questions about the milkman uh, at, <laughs> at, the, at this point. <laughs> um, let's take some some uh, questions uh, from 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 you guys uh, in the chat room. Let's see. Uh, Jorge wants to know: Is the jury bitter against Emmett? It seems like people hate uh, that Jillian has been breaking her word. Um, but do you think that uh, he, he can get away with murder? So what do we think? Who is the more the jury more bitter towards, either Emmett or Jillian? Um, I think for sure Jillian, because Jillian's the one that makes a deal, and then she's the one that breaks it. Um, but what people don't understand is that Emmett does a lot of getting in her ear to make sure she breaks the deals. So I think that's what he's really good at doing. You know, Alec and Peter got kind of cocky with like, ooh, we run the game from behind the scenes, nobody knows it. But I think that Emmett is really the one that's done it since day one. He's run the entire game behind the scenes, and I don't even think he knows how good of a job he's doing. Anil, who would you vote for, Jillian or Emmett? Um, I would have to vote for... Oh, that's tough, because competitor-wise, Jillian has won a lot. But social game and competitive, Emmett's won. So for respect for the game, I'd vote for Emmett. But personally, I would want to vote for Jillian. I mean, they really had this house on lockdown for the last couple of weeks. I mean, they have. Yeah. They really they went three HOHs in a row. They went. I mean, from when who was the last HOH besides them? Andrew when he um, got yeah. Gary out of the house, and then it went and then it went Jillian, and then Emmett in the double eviction, and then back yeah. to Jillian. Yep. Yeah. I mean, really, I, I can't think of if anybody's ever done this before in the history of Big Brother, where basically it's just had a two-week reign as the HOH. I Getting mean, she, three people out. Yeah, and yeah, it's really been a, a, a quite a run for Jillian and Emmett, and nobody is really uh, standing up to them. So we'll see what happens if and when Gary comes back into the house, and <laughs> that could be the last obstacle thrown in their way. Yep. So we'll, we'll, so we'll see. Now, um, this week I was dying on the show when they made, as part of the have-nots, they made Emmett, or I'm sorry, they made Andrew and Tala watch 10 minutes every morning of, of Jillian and Emmett uh, making out this season. Now, Brian, you have not been a have-not all season. How many minutes have you watched of <laughs> Jillian and Emmett making out this season? <laughs> Way too many. I, I don't know. I mean, sometimes they'll make out for... 20, 30 minutes, and then talk some serious game that you need to hear, and then make out for another hour or so, and dry hump or something Whoa. like that. Whoa. But, Did you see any of that in the house, Anil? Um, No, that was actually the only thing that completely shocked me. Um, just because, you know, me and Jillian talked a lot, and she goes, you know, I, I would never do it just because it's on TV and stuff. But what Jillian and Emmett I don't think understand is they're not huge fans of the show, so they don't understand that um, the fan base is so huge and that people actually do watch these live feed 24-7 and they put them on YouTube. So I think they're in for quite a shock when they get out. Okay. Well, how will Jillian and Emmett be received after they get out of the house? Will they be uh, people, a lot of people want to uh, see them in person, uh, sort of like uh, Brendan and Rachel, or do you think that people are a little bit over the Jillian and Emmett showmance? Um, I think that people, they're like Canada's sweetheart right now. I think so. so. I think i think that they, they're almost, I love Brendan and Rachel, but they're more likable than Brendan and Rachel personality-wise. Yeah, I think they're, they're, 
even though Jillian has done a lot of dirty stuff in the house, and I know I'm not talking about make out <laughs> stuff. I'm talking about a, a lot of double dealing. She does seem to, you know, be a nice person. I feel like at least on the TV show, she comes off as uh, somebody who is nice, and I think that most of the viewers, at least, don't dislike her. Yeah, I think that. Um, I, I hate to say the word genuine that she's a genuine person because she's not genuine with her deals, but she's definitely like a very, very sweet lady. Yeah, it doesn't seem to come from a mean place. It seems exactly, to be like, yeah. hey, I, I, hey, you stepped into this house. I'm trying to win a hundred thousand dollars, so yeah. I'm sorry I had to lie to you. I feel bad about it, but I had to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she's not like doing like personal attacks in the diary room, or if she is, they're not showing it. So. We'll, we'll see exactly how that's going to play out after the fact. And um, this last question, how about, does Tala have any chance to win this game whatsoever? Um, I've been asked that a lot. I think that she can get to second very easily. Um, oh. But if she manages to win a lot of competitions, because there's still the biggest competitions coming up, um, the HOH, the veto, Final Four veto is huge because you pick who goes home. Um, and she can win the last HOH. Um, so she has a chance to really win three major competitions to give her a shot of winning against Emmett, Jillian, or Andrew, or whoever comes back. Okay, Brian, is there anything that we missed talking about? Um, just based, uh, just starting with the POV, it was a three-parter. I don't know if we hit on this, but after that, Jillian was saying that Peter was acting like a sore loser after he lost the POV. Uh. Um, also, Emmett, was DQ'd out of that competition. Oh, the cheater. And it advanced Peter, and Emmett was saying that, well, yeah, it was something. They wanted Peter to be moved on because they liked Peter more, yeah. they being Big Brother Ram. Here's a question from Richard D. in the chat room. He wants to know, uh, do you think that Emmett would throw Jillian under the bus to take Tala to the final two since he keeps saying they need to keep her since they could beat her? Uh, is there any chance that Jillian and Emmett, Jillian or Emmett would screw the other one over to take somebody else to the final two? I think a lot earlier in the game when the Quattro still existed, but at this point I think their best case scenario is actually to take one another and stick and be loyal to it. Yeah, it's sort of the Robin Amber scenario where it's like if you let that other person in there, the jury is going to vote for the other person exactly. just as an objection to that final two, especially with that other person in the jury house. Nobody's going to like them, and it'll be yeah. a 6-1 vote against the, whoever gets to the end. We'll see. I think they need each other at this point. Exactly. So we'll, we'll see exactly how that goes out. All right, so Big Brother Canada is on again on Wednesday night at, 9 p.m. Eastern, and then the live eviction and return to the house for somebody is at 10 Eastern on Thursday. And Brian, are the polls still open to vote somebody back into the house? Yeah, I think so for another f couple of hours, maybe at uh, midnight or something around there. Is when All show. right, yeah, so, big votes tonight. so cast your votes at uh, bigbrothercanada.ca. And Anil, one, one last plea for, for AJ. Um, AJ didn't get a chance to fight for Vito. The other three did, and one quit. So, give him another shot. Okay. All right. There you have it. If you want to subscribe to our Big Brother podcast, you could do so to our audio feed if you go to robhaswebsite.com slash bbpodcast or subscribe and get our YouTube video interviews. You can get them on YouTube at robhaswebsite.com slash YouTube or if you're already on YouTube, you can click on the yellow subscribe button and uh, get all of our reality TV interviews. We very much appreciate it. All right, that's going to do it for us here tonight. I'll be back on Wednesday night for Survivor. Uh, Anil was telling me before we started, uh, he's into this Survivor Caramoan season. Yes, uh, it's actually turned out to be um, that last Tribal Council put me through it, so I'm excited to see what happens in the future. Who's going home next, Anil? I don't know. I'm kind of nervous about my girl Brenda. I love her, but you know she's not getting a lot of airtime, and she might. The fact that she just won immunity might hurt her. Well, they said on the commercials for this week's episode, it's the craziest tribal council in the show's history, which is, I'm but, sure is uh, a lot of hyperbole, but <laughs> that's what that's at least what they're saying. So right after that tribal council ends, I'll be live with Stephen Fishback, 9:15 p.m. Eastern on Survivor Know-It-Alls, and then we'll uh, talk to whoever gets kicked off in that crazy tribal council on Thursday morning. So thank you guys for joining us here live. 
or watching us here on YouTube. Thank you, Anil, for uh, stepping up to the plate and helping us try to figure out this latest power shift. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Brian Lynch, thank you for all that you do watching the live feeds so we don't have to. <laughs> oh, it's always a pleasure. You know that. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Have a great night, everybody. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care.